When adapting modern portfolio theory techniques to a much shorter time frame, it's necessary to change the calculation time frame of the key metrics to get reliable results. All will be explained. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. This is the third out of four techniques I'll be covering to adapt modern portfolio theory techniques to a shorter term swing and day trading context. So let's make a start and take a look at calculation timeframes and recalculation intervals. So I'll skip over this slide fairly quickly because I've covered this in the previous two episodes, but for those of you that haven't seen those already, then you might want to just read through the notes here. But the essence is that there's a huge amount of value in modern portfolio theory techniques, and I pose this question of whether this could be applied to day trading and swing trading, and my view is that with a number of adaptations, one of which I'm covering today, the answer is yes. So in the previous two episodes, I've already considered the expected return calculation and how that needs to be adapted. And then last time I looked at the portfolio construction and the fact that that changes so rapidly within a day trading context means that there's additional considerations there also. And so this time I move on to calculation timeframes. So when I'm talking about calculations, what are the main metrics that I'm alluding to? Well, those needed for portfolio analysis are, first of all, a measure of risk. And for this, in previous videos, when I've gone through that calculation in a lot of detail, I've used the standard deviation of returns. Another metric is what's known as the expected return. And then also we need to calculate what the correlation is between all of the assets that we intend to trade so that we can then avoid having an over-correlated portfolio, which of course would introduce higher levels of risk. Now, typically all of these calculations will share the same calculation timeframe. And certainly in the examples that I've provided previously, where I've looked at this in Excel, that's exactly what I've done. So this is one of those Excel examples that I produced. And you can see, for example, here, in terms of the standard deviation of returns, that's using these daily values that we calculated here. Likewise, in terms of the expected return, we're using those same values for that calculation. And then in terms of the correlation between the assets, again, we're looking at one compared to the other, but based on daily returns. And in more traditional portfolio management, depending on what that time frame is for the investment manager, they'll probably be calculating these metrics, maybe on a daily time frame, but maybe longer, maybe on weekly data or even monthly data. But the main point here is that these metrics will not be optimal if we're looking at shorter duration positions, as we are in swing or day trading. So here, these will need to be adapted. And again, it will depend on what kind of time frame you personally as a trader are targeting, but you might consider performing these maybe using four hour data, one hour data, or even less if your time frame is particularly short term. So based on this, now let's look at some of the practicalities and the implications of this. Well, the first thing is that market dynamics, of course, of different assets 
will change over time. And so metrics that we might have used, let's say, a month ago for things like standard deviation of returns, expected return and correlation coefficients will not be as relevant for the trading decisions we're making right now as they were a month ago. And so because of this, we need to re-perform those calculations of the various assets that we're trading on a fairly frequent basis. But the option of doing this on demand isn't really feasible. So if you were performing these calculations at the point of opening each position and after closing positions to do a full re-optimization of the portfolio, the latency of that would probably be too large. And so I can tell you the approach that I take personally so that you can decide whether this is right for you or not. But I calculate all three of these key metrics overnight and then those values for every asset and the correlation values for every combination of assets is stored and used throughout the next day's trading session. And what this means is that that overhead in terms of performance is happening between the US session closing and the Asian session opening and that's a time that I don't trade anyway. And then the calculations throughout the day are then much quicker because I'm using those pre-stored values. However, there are still certain calculations such as looking for that optimal position on the efficient frontier that will of course need to be performed real time when these trade actions occur because you have no idea what calculations you'll need to perform until those trade actions actually happen. So there is some latency here but you can do a lot to reduce it at the time that we are opening and closing those positions. But again, it isn't really feasible to be able to perform these manually. And as I said in the last episode, if you're producing any decent quantity of trades each day, then really these calculations need to be performed in an automated algorithmic way. And so we've now covered three of our adaptations that are required. And so in the next episode, episode 35, I'll cover the last of these, which is how we deal with monetary weightings compared to lot sizes. And I'm also going to look at the fact that different assets for different traders will use different calculation currencies. And because of this, there are certain conversions that need to take place. But after this episode, this will be the end of this series on institutional grade risk management techniques. But don't worry, I'll be moving on after this with a new series, which I think you'll find particularly interesting. I'm going to be covering the process I take when I'm evaluating different technical indicators to identify if they could potentially add value to my trading strategies or not. And so you really will get to see the approach and the process that I take firsthand. And the indicators that I'm going to be looking at are ones that I've had on my to-do list for a long time, but have never yet got around to actually evaluating them. And so I made the decision to make this video series more real world. I actually have no idea yet whether that will be fruitful and I'll come out with a indicator that I can use or not. But I wanted to share that process with you real time because I think there's a lot of value to be gained from that. Okay, so in order to get notified when the next episode and also that new series is available, then make sure you subscribe to the channel right below. But now until next time, trade safe.